A blessed day to all. Today, I am going to discuss to you how to solve rational equations. To start with, let me give you definition of terms that are important in studying this topic. First, let us define rational equations. Rational equation is an equation containing at least one rational expression. Rational expressions typically contain a variable in the denominator. For this reason, we will take care to ensure that the denominator is not zero by making note of restrictions and checking our solutions. Because if the denominator is zero, then the rational expression becomes undefined and it is no longer included in, rush in the real numbers. So we have here steps in solving the rational equations. First, factor the denominators if possible. Second, multiply both sides by the LCD. Third, simplify and solve. And the last one, double check by substituting. Solve the following rational equations. So we are given here three. So I will discuss to you one number at a time. Okay, let's start answering 5x minus one third is equal to one x. So the first is we need to factor out the denominators if possible. And in this uh, example here, we have denominators x, 3, and x. So, they are already simple numbers and cannot be factored out. So, we will go right away to the next uh, step, and that is to multiply both sides by the LCD. How do we find the LCD? Okay, we will see what is the common denominator, the least common denominator. So since we have here x and 3 and another x, so what is common here is x and 3. So if there are two x, like 5 over x and 1 over x, so we will only write 1x. And so we will multiply both sides by 3x. Our LCD will be 3x. So we first make a note that x is not equal to 0. So uh, it is important that we, that we say that x is not equal to 0. Because if x is 0, then it will become 5 over 0 and 1 over 0. And that becomes undefined. So that is the restriction x should never be 0. So our LCD is 3x. And so in our next step, we multiply both sides by the LCD. So in the left side, we have 5 over x minus 1 third. So every term we multiply by 3x. In the right side, we have 1 over x. We also multiply that with 3x. So when we multiply in the left side, we need to multiply 3x to every fraction. That means we multiply 3x to 5 over x here, and we also multiply 3x to 1 over 3. So you just copy the minus. Equals 3 over x, multiply it to 1 over x, and then we distribute. So when we distribute, that becomes, when we have 3x times 5, it becomes 15. And then divided by x, so x divided by x becomes 1. So 1 times 15 is just 15. It is just the same as we cancel the x in the numerator and also cancel the x in the denominator. And so 3 times 5 is 15. That's the same answer. Okay, minus 
we have 3x times 1 over 3. 3x times 1 is 3x. Divided by 3, that becomes x. So 3 divided by 3 is 1. That's why what is left is just x. It's the same as you cancel the 3 and you just multiply x times 1 and you get x. And since there's minus there, that's why it's minus x. In here, 3x times 1 over x. So basically, we will just cancel the x and we will multiply 3 times 1. That's why we have 3. So why do we distribute or why did we multiply both sides of the equation by the LCD? Basically, the goal is to eliminate the denominators. As you can see here in the, in the last uh, process, what is left is 15 minus x equals 3. So we could no longer see the denominator. And so we have now the linear equation. I already taught you how to solve for the linear equation. So we need to have x only in the left side and the number should be in the right side. That is the value of x. And so we will have to uh, subtract this one with 15. 15 minus 15 equals 0 minus x. That's why we have negative x. And then 3 minus 15. What we did in the left, we also do in the right side. So 3 minus 15, that gives us negative 12. And since we're looking for the value of x, and we have negative x here, we need to multiply negative x with negative 1 to get a positive x. And we also need to multiply negative 12 by negative 1. And so that becomes 12. And our final answer will be x is equal to 12. Whenever we are asked to solve for the equation, that means we are asked to find the value of the variable that will make the equation true. Okay, so in this case here, we are having a rational equation. So we will double check if our answer x equals 12 is correct. So we will substitute that in the rational equation. So x is equal to 12, we will substitute that in here. So instead of writing 5 over x, we will write 5 over 12. And then minus one third equals, instead of writing one over x, we write one over 12. And then we manipulate the fraction. Okay, in the left side, you can see that we have five over 12 minus one third. Now, these fractions are uh, dissimilar. They don't have the same denominator. So for us to be able to subtract them, we need to change one third into a similar fraction to 512, meaning we will find a way to make 3 becomes 12. And so for this to become uh, for this one third to become similar to 5 over 12, we will change 3 into 12. So we have 12 divided by 3 is 4. 4 times 1 is 4. So that becomes 4 over 12. As you can see, 4 over 12, when you simplify it, it is equal to 1 third. See, 4 divided by 4 is 1. 12 divided by 4 is 3. So basically, we just did something. We just find another fraction that is equivalent to one-third in such a way that it will have the same denominator with 5 over 12 so that we will be able to subtract the fractions. We can only subtract fractions if the denominators are the same or if the fractions are similar. This time, we have both 12 and 12 for the two for the two fractions so we can now subtract 5 minus 4 
is 1 over 12. So we have here 1 over 12. And in the right side, no need to do anything. It's already 1 over 12. As you can see, the equation now is true. 1 over 12 is equal to 1 over 12, and that is true. That means to say x equals 12 is correct. So that means we solve number 1 correctly. So the answer or the solution is 12. Proceed to number 2. The given in number 2 is 2 minus 1 over x times x plus 1 equals 3 over x plus 1. So number 2 is a little bit different from number 1. So the first thing that we should do always is to see if the denominators are already factored out. As we can see, the denominator of 2 is 1 and the denominator of 1 is x times x plus 1. It's already factored out. So we don't need to factor it out. We will now proceed to the next step. We will find the LCD for us to be able to multiply it to both sides of the equation. So how do we find the LCD? Okay, look at the denominator of 2. It is 1. The denominator of 1 is x times x plus 1. And the denominator of 3 is x plus 1. So we have here common denominators. See, there is x plus 1. That's a denominator. And there is x. So we have two denominators that we need to use. So that means to say that our LCD is x and x plus 1. Okay, no need to write the 1 since 1 is just, it's just okay. So, if we have here 2 third, then 3 is still part of the LCD. But since 2 over 1, 1, you don't need to write 1. So, our LCD is x times x plus 1. So, we will now multiply it to all the terms in the right side and in the left side. Let's start with the left side. So, we will multiply x times x plus 1 times 2. We have here times 2. Copy the minus. x times x plus 1 multiplied to 1 over x times x plus 1. So, when we multiply it, the x times x plus 1 times 2, we will get, of course, we need to multiply 2 times x. That's why we get 2x here. And then we copy x plus 1. When you multiply x times x plus 1 times 1 over x plus x plus 1, over x times x plus 1, you can see that the, numer the numerator x times x plus 1 is the same as the denominator x times x plus 1. If they are the same, that means the equivalent is just 1. Or it is just like you cancel them and what is left is only 1. That is why in here, in the next step, you only have minus 1. Because you have canceled this x times x plus 1 over x times x plus 1. So what is left is just minus 1. Okay. And you also do the same in the right side. You multiply 3 over x plus 1 times x times x plus 1. That is the LCD. When you multiply it, you will notice that in the denominator there is x plus 1. In the numerator there is also x plus 1. So whenever you see an expression in the numerator, the same as in as the expression in the denominator, you can just cancel it. So what is left now is x and 3. x times 3 is equal to 3x. So we have now, we have already eliminated the denominator. So this time, we will now manipulate the, manipulate what is being, what is left there.
So we have 2x, we distribute it. 2x times x, that gives us 2x squared. So there is x to the power of 1 and x to the power of 1. When you multiply it, your exponent will become 2. You multiply 2x times 1, you get 2x minus 1. Just copy the minus 1. Equals, just copy the 3x. So here, you notice that our answer here is not yet the variable with the value. We are given here an equation. And what is different here is this equation is not linear equation, but it is called quadratic equation. Quadratic equation is an equation with the highest exponent of the variable is 2. So you have here x squared. The linear, the highest exponent is just 1. So how do we solve quadratic equation? So there are many ways to solve quadratic equation. You can use quadratic formula. You can use completing the square. And you can also use factoring. So here, I will be using factoring. But before we will factor out, we will need to simplify this one further. Okay, as you can see, you have there 3x in the right side. You have to only have the x on the left side. That's why we need to subtract negative, uh, we need to subtract 3x for 3x to become 0. And so when we subtract 3x, we will get, we will just copy 2x squared, 2x minus 3x, we get negative x. And we copy negative 1 equals 3x minus 3x is 0. Next, we have here 2x squared minus x minus 1 equals 0. So this is now the quadratic equation, the final quadratic equation. For us to be able to know what is the value of x, we will solve it using factoring. So I, I opt to solve this using factoring or using this method uh, in factoring where uh, we're, uh, we're in, I will use uh, factoring by AC method and factoring by grouping. So, how do we do that? So, to use factoring by AC process and grouping, we will get the A in the quadratic equation. The A is the numerical coefficient of x squared and the C is the constant. The constant is the number that has no letter beside it and that is the negative 1. So we have now a positive 2 times the c negative 1. That's why it's called a c process. We, we will multiply them and we get negative 2. After that, we will factor out this negative 2. We need to find the factors of negative 2 so that we will be able to rewrite this equation into something that we can group. Okay, so the factors of negative 2 will be based on the middle term which is negative x. Negative x here is the same as negative 1x meaning the negative 1 should be the result when we add the factors of negative 2. So what do I mean? We need to find all the factors of negative 2. When we say factors, that means the numbers that we multiply in order to get negative 2. So these are the numbers or these are the factors of negative 2. We have 2 and negative 1. You see, when you multiply 2 and negative 1, you'll get negative 2. Or, you have negative 2 and positive 1. Still the same, when you multiply negative 2 and positive 1, your answer will still be negative 2. So, these two pairs are the factors of negative 2. Now, in this grouping, we need to rewrite this equation 
2x minus 2x squared minus x minus 1 equals 0. We need to rewrite it, to regroup it, or to group it. And we can do that by first finding the factors that are, that are the correct pair. How do we know if the factors, if these factors are the correct pair? We will base it on the, on the middle term. The middle term of the equation is negative x or negative 1x. That means to say that when you add the two factors, that should give you a, a sum of negative 1. So which factors here is where is which factors here will give you a total or the a sum of negative one you see two plus negative one the answer is positive one negative two plus positive one the answer is negative one meaning the factors are negative two and positive one what are we going to use where are we going to use those factors we will use them to rewrite the given equation. 2x squared, we copy. And negative x, instead of writing negative x, we write negative 2x. Where did I get the negative 2x? That's from the factors negative 2 and positive 1. So negative 2 is for negative 2x. And positive 1 is for plus x. So, this negative 2 and positive 1 are the numerical coefficients of x in the middle term. So, you see, when you add negative 2x plus x, you will still get negative x. So, that means to see, we just rewrite it so that we can answer the, we can find the factors by grouping. So, how do we group? Okay. By grouping, we will find the factors of 2x squared minus x minus 1. And that will be, we group these two, 2x squared minus 2x, that's one group. x minus 1 is another group. So we will now factor it out. When we factor out 2x squared minus 2x, we get, we have the common number here, that is 2x. So, 2x squared divided by 2x is x. So, you put out the common, you put out the common monomial 2x. 2x squared divided by 2x is x. 2x divided by 2x is 1. Just copy the minus. In here, no need to factor out. It's already simple. So, you will just copy it. Now, look at this answer here. You can, you can see that in here there is x minus 1, and in the second binomial, it's also x minus 1. So we have now a common binomial. So to factor it out, just get the common binomial, x minus 1. Get that one here, x minus 1. And put another parenthesis. You copy the 2x, the one left here. Since you've written already the x minus 1 in the first parenthesis, what is left now is 2x. You write it inside another parenthesis, and you copy the plus. The plus is here. And also, you copy, when you divide this with x minus 1, what is left is 1. So we have here plus 1. So what did I do? I get the common binomial. The common binomial is x minus 1. So I divide this whole thing with x minus 1. What is left is 2x. I write it in the next parenthesis. This one, I also divide it with x minus 1. x minus 1 divided by x minus 1 is 1, positive 1. That's why I have here positive 1. That's how I get the factors. And these are the factors here. 2x plus 1 times x minus 1. And of course, we will just copy equal 0. So that's how we get this one here. The factors of 2x squared minus x minus 1. Again, you can actually find it by using quadratic formula or 
completing the square. It's up to you. But as for me, I just use the factoring method, AC process, and grouping. Okay, let's proceed. Now, we already have 2x plus 1 and x minus 1 equals 0. What is the meaning of this? This means that 2x plus 1 is equal to 0 and x minus 1 is also equal to 0. So, we can now solve it. This becomes linear. This one also is linear. So, to solve this one, we will just uh, subtract here. Positive 1 minus 1, that becomes 0. That's why what's left is 2x. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. That's why you have 2x equals negative 1. You divide it by 2. So, that gives you x is equal to negative 1 half. 2x divided by 2, you cancel 2. What is left is x. Negative 1 divided by 2 is 2. So, we have negative 1 half. That's 1 one value of x. You see, if you have quadratic equation, guys, then you can expect that there would be two values of x. So, what's the other value of x here? We also have to equate x minus 1 to 0. So, x minus 1 is equal to 0. So, to find the value of x, you just add negative 1 to become 0. So, x is left. 0 plus 1. So, negative 1 plus 1 is 0. What is left is x. You add also 1 here. 0 plus 1 is 1. So, you have x is equal to 1. So, there are two values of x here. But, you could not say, guys, that all these two values are already the answer. We have to double check. Okay, let's double check the x equals negative 1 half. So we have here, we will now substitute in the given. You have 2. Instead of writing x in here, we write 1, our x is negative 1 half, times our x again is negative 1 half plus 1 equals 3. Instead of writing x plus 1, it's now negative 1 half plus 1 since the value of x is negative 1 half. And then we will solve it for, uh, further. Okay, look here. Negative 1 half plus 1, when you add negative 1 half and 1, it will give you a positive 1 half. So positive 1 half times negative 1 half, it will give you negative 1 fourth in here. And again, negative 1 half plus 1 is positive 1 half. Multiply it to negative 1 half, it will give you negative 1 fourth. Equals negative 1 half plus 1, so we have here positive 1 half. Okay, so we be it becomes 3 over 1 half. This time, uh, this one guys, since it's a complex fraction, when you when you have 1 over, if your denominator is also a fraction, you have to multiply the numerator by the reciprocal of the fraction that is in the denominator. And the reciprocal of 1 fourth is 4. So you will multiply this with negative 4. That's why it becomes 2 plus, you see, negative 1 times 4, I mean, negative 1 times negative 4, that becomes plus. So that's why the, the reciprocal of 1 fourth is 4 over 1. And when you multiply negative and negative, that becomes positive. That's why it will give you a 4. 1 times 4 is just 4 equals the reciprocal 1 half is 2 over 1. So when you multiply 3 times 2, that gives you 6. So here, you have 2. 1 times 4 is 4. So that means 2 plus 4 is equal to 3 times 2 is 6. So the final will be 6 is equal to 6. As you can see, 6 is equal to 6 is true. That means to say, x equals negative 1 half is an answer.
that is the correct answer. Next, since there are two answers because the equation is quadratic, we will now double check the second answer. Our second answer is x equals 1. So we will substitute it to the given 2 minus 1 over, instead of writing x, you write 1 and 1 plus 1 equals 3. x, you substitute it with 1 plus 1. So we will now uh, compute this one, 2 minus 1 times 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, times 1 is 2. That's why it's 1 over 2 equals 3 over 2. Now here, when you subtract a whole number by a fraction, you just need to have uh, the LCD that is 2. So we have the LCD of 2 over 1, we will use 2. So 2 divided by 1 is 2 times 2 is 4. That's why our 2, the equivalent of 2 is 4 over 2 minus just copy 1 half. So basically, we are just making this this, equa this expression here to become similar fractions so that we will be able to subtract it. And so that's equal to 3 over 2. So, this time, we will see if the left side is also 3 over 2. 4 plus 1 is 3. The denominator is 2. That means it's 3 over 2 equals 3 over 2. Meaning, x equals 1 is also an answer. And our answers are correct. x equals negative 1 half and x equals 1 are the two answers. Okay? Proceed to number 3, the last number. We have here x over x plus 2 plus 2 over x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals 5 over x plus 3. Okay, the first step is to factor all denominators. x plus 2 is, or is just simple. x squared plus 5x plus 6, that, that trinomial needs to be factored out. Next, we have x plus 3. No need to factor out, so we copy it. x plus 3 and x plus 2. But this x squared plus 5x plus 6 needs to be factored out. And you just use the same process earlier. You can use, there are many ways to factor out, but I usually use the AC method and the grouping. And when you use it, you will know that the factors here will be x plus 2 and x plus 3. See, there is x plus 3 here, and there's also another x plus 2 here. So our common or the least common denominator is or are x plus 2 and x plus 3. So those expressions that are the same, you just write it once. That's why it becomes the least common denominator. So this is now what we're going to multiply to both sides of the equation. Yes, listen, we need to identify the restrictions. In this case, the restrictions are negative 2 and negative 3. x should not be negative 2, x should not be negative 3, or else that answer is not the answer to our problem. Okay, so how do we solve it? Of course, we will multiply both sides by the LCD. The LCD x plus 2 and x plus 3. And then here we also multiply the same. So when you multiply it, <coughs> basically you will just see that there are common expressions in the denominator and numerator. So numerator, there is x plus 2. Denominator, there is x plus 2. So you just cancel them. So what is left is x. There is x here and x plus 3. So you've already canceled the x plus 2 plus. <coughs> you, will do, you will do the same. Multiply this to 2. That's why you have x plus 2, x plus 3, and you will see that x plus 2 is the same in the denominator x plus 2, 
the numerator x plus 3 is the same in the denominator, denominator x plus 3, so you cancel them. What is left is just 2. That's why here below, that's plus 2. Okay? So we have now, here what is left is x times x plus 3. We have here x times x plus 3. Here we cancelled everything and what's left is 2. That's why we have 2 here. And in here, when we multiply, we cancelled x plus 3. That's the same with the denominator. So what is left is just 5 times x plus 2. So basically, we eliminate the denominator. Next, we solve further. You can see that x times x plus 3 plus 2 is equal to 5 times x plus 2. So you just distribute, you multiply. You multiply x times x, you get x squared. Multiply x times 3, you get 3x. Copy plus 2. Multiply 5 times x, you get 5x. Multiply 5 times 2, you get 10. Just copy the plus. And this time, simplify further. So you have x squared, you have 5x here, so for us to eliminate 5x, we subtract negative, we subtract 5x, so 5x minus 5x becomes 0. This 10, we also need to eliminate it, so we subtract 10. So 10 minus 10 is 0. So when we solve for the quadratic equation, in the right side, it should only be 0. Okay, here, since we subtracted 5x, so that means when we subtract 5x from 3x, we get negative 2x. And we subtracted negative uh, 10, we subtracted 10, so 2 minus 10 is negative 8. So just copy the x squared minus 2x minus 8 equals 0. So that becomes our quadratic equation. So, since we have a quadratic equation, then we can expect that there will be two answers here. Okay, so this time, we need to factor out x squared minus 2x minus 8 equals 0. And to factor it out, we need to, to do the same, the AC process and the grouping. But you can also use the different solution to this and so by using the ac process i will multiply the a which is one and the c which is negative eight that gives me negative eight and find the factors of negative eight that will give the total or the sum of negative two so here are the pairs of factors of negative eight and when i get that the sum the pairs that has the sum that is negative 2 is 2. The factors are 2 and negative 4. So we will use this in the groupings. So x squared minus 2x minus 8, we, re we rewrite it in this way. x squared and we copy the factors positive 2, that will become positive 2x. Negative 4, that will become negative 4x, and just copy the negative 8. This time, we do the grouping. So the grouping will be, I group x squared plus 2x, and negative 4x minus 8. When I group negative 4x minus 8, I will put minus here. So when I put this 4x and 8 in the parenthesis, it will become 4x plus 8. Because when you multiply it, it needs to be positive 4x for us to get a negative 4x. And the positive 8 needs to be negative, uh, needs to be positive, so that when we multiply it with negative here, it will give us a negative 8. Or else, if we don't do it that way, our answer will be wrong. So we will now factor out. Factor out the common monomial, x squared and 2x is x. x squared divided by x is x. 2x divided by x is 2. And here we factor out 4 and 8. So we have common, common monomial 4. We factor it out 4. 4x divided by 4 is x. 8 divided by 4 is 2. So we have here x plus 2. 
as you can see there is there are binomials that are the same the x plus 2 and x plus 2 that common binomial will be written first here for our factors so we have x plus 2 and what is left here when we divide this with x plus 2 what is left is x you put that in another parenthesis and here when you divide it by x plus 2 what is left is negative 4 that's why there's negative 4 so x minus 4 so that's how we got the factors here x plus 2 times x minus 4 equals 0 so we will now equate these two binomials to 0 x plus 2 is equal to 0 and x minus 4 is equal to 0 so when we solve it x plus 2 equals 0 we subtract by 2 so x that will become x 0 minus 2 that will become negative 2 so x is equal to negative 2 here it's x minus 4 we added 4 x minus 4 plus 4 is x it will become 0 so what is left is just x 0 plus 4 is 4 so that's the second value of x is 4 we have two answers here negative 2 and positive 4 so since we have two answers we will double check both answers but as we saw as we have x equals negative 2 remember that in our restriction x should not be negative 2 but since our answer is negative 2 then that negative 2 is not the answer you see when you substitute negative 2 in the equation we will have negative 2 over negative 2 plus 2 that becomes 0 so also here negative 2 plus 2 that's 0 negative 2 plus 3 that's positive 1 when you multiply it it will still become 0 and if the 0 is on the denominator that fraction is called undefined so it is not part of the real numbers so that's undefined meaning negative 2 is not an answer to the so to the equation and that negative 2 is called an extraneous solution so there is only one answer here and that is 4 let us see if 4 is correct so we will now substitute 4 here 4 instead of writing 2 we put 4 plus 2 here 2 over x plus 2 becomes 4 plus 2 x plus 3 becomes 4 plus 3 and 5 over x plus 3 becomes 4 plus 3 and then we compute further we have here 4 over 4 plus 2 is 6 plus 2 over 4 plus 2 is 6 4 plus 3 is 7 6 times 7 is 42 2 over 42 you can simplify it you divide by 2 you get 1 42 divided by 2 you get 21 that's why you have here 1 over 21 and 4 over 6 you simplify it you divide by 2 you get 2 over 3 4 divided by 2 is 2 6 divided by 2 is 3 so 2 over 3 is this equal to 5 over 7 okay we have here 2 third plus 1 over 21 we could not add fractions that are dissimilar so we will change 2 third into a fraction with a denominator of 21 and so we write 21 and then 21 divided by 3 is 7 7 times 2 is 14 so meaning 2 third is equal to 14 over 21 so as you can see they are now the same they have the same denominator you can now add 14 plus 1 you get 15 over 21 and when you simplify 15 over 21 you divide 15 by 3 you get 5 divide 21 by 3 you get 7 and so 5 over 7 is equal to 5 over 7 and that is correct meaning to say our answer that is 4 is correct so there is only one answer to this uh, example number 3 and that is 4
So I'm done with the discussion. This time, it's your turn to check on yourself if you understood my lesson. Now, you will practice exercise. So you can master this lesson if you practice it. So practice answering these three numbers. Um, you try answering number one first. And then later, I will just let you answer two and three when we're done with number one. Maybe you can have number two and three later. You can pause the video and answer it. Try it by yourself if you, if you already understood it, you know. If you can answer it, that means you have, you have understood the discussion. And it is really good when you are able to understand the discussion and when you apply the principles or the process in answering it, when your brain store up those information, the steps, the process, and you are able to find the correct answer, it's really good. You will feel really good because you will be able to, to, to test yourself the how far you have understood this principle in mathematics you see what i love in math is even if you use different solution as long as you follow the principles of operations simplifications and all then you will still have the same answer my teacher before told us that there are about 101 ways and more to kill a carabao and the same there are 101 more ways to answer a math problem so do not be do not hesitate to use other way of answering it as long as you're following the principle then you'll be able to get the the correct answer. There are actually many ways on how to solve rational equations. But of course, I am just teaching you one way. Of course, I don't have the luxury of time to do it. So I hope that you are able to find the answer, the correct answer to, the num to number one. And later, just go on answering number two and number three. So I will now reveal the correct answer. This is number one. X is equal to four. So the correct answer for number one is X is equal to four. For number two, the correct answer, X is equal to negative six. You can double check on it. And number three, x is equal to 25 so those are the correct answers to the practice exercise i hope that you get something new you learn something new today with me and thank you for listening for watching my video i hope that you will learn to love math and learn to to love more i mean love to learn more so thank you for being with me. May God bless you. Take good care always. Bye-bye.